Jay wants to redeem himself spiritually. Josh wants to redeem himself of moral inertia. May wants to redeem herself in the eyes of her parents half a world away. Tommy wants to relieve himself of the burden of his murderous crime. Jay tells Josh that while the dust of corruption may settle, the layer of dirt left will be thinner than before. Ivan Sen takes us on a journey to the heart of Goldstone. What an unusual film we have today, Australian film called Goldstone, uh, written by Ivan Swen. Ivan Swen wrote this film as a sequel to his well-accepted thriller, Mystery Road. But there is something more to this one, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's got a real polemic. I'd say it was actually a polemical film. D definitely one way of looking at it. It's angry, but I like the fact it's angry. It's got something to say. I also like how Sven expresses his discontent. It's layered and it doesn't affect you immediately. His political and social statements unfold some time after the credits roll. I must admit I was hoping for something more emotional and more redemptive, mm. but it's not Sven's role to absolve his non-Indigenous audience of any collective guilt. His story is a distillation of the real world, explained literally and figuratively. I actually think that there are two ways of looking at this film. Goldstone is either crime thriller, homage to film noir kind of movie, or postmodern political cinema with intention to provoke and experiment with gender and stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I obviously can't read mine of its other, but I can tell you one thing. If first is the case, which I honestly doubt, then this is flawed attempt. Characters and their relationships are poorly written, casting is off, the dialogue hurts. Some of the creative choices, uh, they, they simply don't match Sven's talent. But as a counterpoint to that, the mining and the fracking of the land are like a metaphor for spiritual evisceration. Land is a key element of Aboriginal spirituality and our own, but we're slow to realise it. And these are the key forces driving the story and Sven tailors them to match his vision. I understand that. And actually, I believe, Andrew, that we are presented with second option and that Ivan Sven brought to life very brave rendering of gender in a way no one really expected. We get to know that straight at the beginning of the film, when we meet Josh, outback policeman, who looks more like a super handsome surfer who lost his way while returning from Bondi Beach. Yes, or a matinee idol. <laughs> and then we come to, to realize that other characters don't live in the desert either, and that Goldstone is not a desert town after all, but rather a vast space filled with these trailers, mega symbol of Australia and its current socio-political struggle. It didn't always resonate with me the way I'd like it to have. It was conceptually high-minded, but not deeply affecting. Sven is an auteur, but he's not yet at the peak of his powers. But when he is, I look forward to the final product immensely. <laughs> Me too, yeah. I, I'm joining you, definitely, in that way. <laughs> in order to achieve full impact, director Sven had to subvert mainstream conventions, basically deconstructing cinema we know and still creating something that is, you know, appealing to broader audience. That is not an easy task and it takes years of experimenting, maturing as an artist and surrounding yourself with the right crew you know and you trust to. Goldstone is a fortunately hard product. It is a film that could be easily mistaken for realism and that itself is a problem. But despite whatever we feel about the end product, it can't be denied that Ivan Sven is ambitious. He obviously loves cinema. He's attempted to tell different aspects of the story with genres he felt brings out the best in each of them. A western from the perspective of the, of the supposed outsider story, a noir thriller to tell the story of a crime, and satire to make fun of those in power whose greed corrupts them. Yeah, yeah but that still doesn't resolve my main problem with this film. It, uh, it attempts to satisfy both worlds, and that's a serious compromise. If you want to experiment, you just have to be ready to go all the way. Goldstone lacks rhythm. In a way, it mirrors that nothingness of the desert, which is fine, but this cancels out atmosphere of constriction that thriller naturally needs, you know? I mean, where do you hide in desert? Or how do you make close-ups in such a vast space? Yes, but on the other hand, Sven is able to capture the atmosphere of the landscape and he uses film as a conduit for the vein of spiritual feelings that runs through it. At moments, I felt I was on sacred ground. Not many directors have that intuitive skill. It was occasionally a visceral experience for me. Yes, but I don't think this director intended to pack such emotional punch, as this film has nothing to do with such kind of cinema. 
Just look at the dialogue, how absurd and at times surreal it is. Seen when Chinese Madame gives advices to one of her rebellious hookers is my absolute favorite. You know, it's so far-fetched and delivered with zero acting logic that leaves no doubt whether it should be understood literally. Who actually walks around desert in an evening gown and high heels <laughs> and speaks like, like a gun machine, really? Yeah, but I get it conceptually. However, it was the more profound aspects of the story that failed to deliver for me. Sven seemed to downplay conflict and he opts for a more minimalist approach from his actors. There's so much to fight against and tension to be felt, yet his direction seems to consciously avoid it. It's pretty hard to comment on Sven's direction without also acknowledging how much of a personal mark he leaves on the film as composer, writer, editor and photographer. Photographer, yeah. photographer. It all informs his directorial approach and it would be unfair to judge his skill as director by the degree of success he uses those skills. I think he needs an editor, another editor to work with, someone who can bring out the best of his directorial vision and make it taut and less baggy because it, it does feel a bit loose in Goldstone. True. Quite a diverse group of actors and acting styles, well-known and experienced Australian stars and fairly young artists at the very beginning of their career. How did you find it overall? Well, I thought Aaron Pedersen gave an excellent performance as Detective Jay Swan. He had navigates through all the disparate elements of the film we've talked about with supreme skill. He's the film's anchor. He plays the flawed protagonist on two levels. He's a detective to solve a crime, but also a man having to balance two identities and the pull of both of them. His journey embodies that of many Aboriginal Australians who've experienced displacement on a physical and spiritual level. Yet again, acting is another example of deconstructive approach. Great majority of characters are flat, with little or no flash to build upon, lacking history or meaningful relationships. All but one. Aaron Pedersen, Aboriginal detective, delivers strikingly realistic performance and not without reason. He is the only one with few other Aboriginal characters who belongs to this place. Desert is his personal context and history, while others are transplants, intruders who had nothing to do there in the first place. Therefore, there is no development with others. Mm. Well, I think the other performances support Pedersen's central position within the story. He's like an observer in a surreal nightmare. The exception being Josh, whose own story intersects with Jay's and culminates in the only scene of real tension and conflict, when Jay makes Josh see he's in a metaphorical hell he claims he can avoid. Jackie Weaver's character, for example, often uh, referred as the mayor, is, is really accomplished performance in my view. First of all, we ask ourselves what is she exactly mayor of? Then we learn she's in a very dubious relationship with a mining magnate. What a simple but effective reference to ever stronger fusion of politics and big money. As usually, Jackie delivers effortless performance. Her secret lies in simplicity of her acting. She gets Sven's concept, not necessarily intellectually, but through her naturally strong intuition. Menace in her eyes, that wicked smile and always perfect lipstick, even when she's baking a cake, is really awkward as the film itself. Mm. Well, I think Weaver definitely knows how to perform the trajectory of her character. She's able to compensate for any lack in the storytelling. She and David Wenham are like parasites who have a symbiotic relationship with one another True. and the land. Their amorality is the result of working within a system that demands people conform to it for their survival. Their characters are extensions of the mine and the system that supports it. Their story is like an inverted reflection of the indigenous yeah. one. Whereas David Golpalil has an openness which few actors naturally possess. He's well cast in his role as the gateway to Jay's spiritual development and the one who stands his ground against the mining company's sleight of hand. Absolutely agree. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier, Ivan Sven writes, directs, films, he even composes music for his film. He's either a control freak or runs on a very tight budget. Being a Stradigoran, I'd say it was because he was running on a very tight budget, <laughs> sadly enough. His photography tells a story of its own. It creates the framework for his metaphorical vision. 
The characters aren't photographed in a way which integrates them with their environment naturally. Sven goes to great lengths to contrast the theatricality of his supporting cast with the all-encompassing landscape and its warm, earthy textures. Australian Outback is safe bet if you want to give your story unique visual treatment. However, there are way too many Australian films trying to leech on that. Outback is stunning and probably very cheap to film at, but it exaggerates importance that desert has in lives of modern Australians. That's true. I mean, we have a very strong urban culture, but that's not often referred to in Australian filmmaking. The aerial footage had the effect of making the land cradle the characters and seem insignificant both at the same time. Mm. And let's be honest, Sven loves birds views and drones, at times he loves them way too much. Image of a car cutting through the desert reminded me of a surgical knife that leaves an enduring scar on a tissue of Aboriginal identity. Mm. Otherwise, powerful symbol became ordinary cutting as it's used every now and then. Less is more, Ivan. Same goes for Aboriginal sites and rock drawings that are unnecessarily repeated throughout the film with deafening score. On a whole, it brought to mind Vim Vendor's Paris, Texas and how he captured the character of the desert as a prelude to the solving of a mystery. I think he has more in common with that auteur than uh, other directors he's been compared with like John Ford. John Ford, yeah. So, Goran, we've seen the film and we've reviewed the film. How many stars would you award it? Wow, this is the really hard one and I'm on edge here because this film has very, very promising and, and, and great uh, things about it. And as well, it is still halfway product in a way. Yeah. So, um, taking all of this in consideration, I would go with uh, 2.5 stars. Well, you know, I mean, I think the Australian film industry doesn't usually accommodate someone of his singular vision. He's a pioneer in that sense, and I think he's created a lead for other filmmakers to follow, which is very brave of him. Um, I, but by the same token, I'd recommend watching the film with an open mind and not being a passive viewer or audience. So for that reason, I'd give the film three and a half stars.